Hi guys and welcome to part 63 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. In part 62 I covered some great werewolf mods, the Tales of Lycanthropy and the Heart of the Beast mod. Uh, but I did not cover all the werewolf mods I wanted to cover. There are way too many to do in one video. And so I'm going to continue on with the werewolf theme for this video. And I'm going to start by looking at the werewolf perk tree. The werewolf perk tree was added in the Dawnguard DLC. And as far as I'm aware, you still need that DLC to actually get this tree. And it was a good idea. It really was. But it feels a little underwhelming. It, there's not really a lot to it. There are not that many perks, to be honest. You, you've got one, one set of perks to increase your damage, um, a perk for stamina, a perk that lets you heal twice as much when you feed, a perk that lets you feed off creatures as well as people. Um, and then the rest are perks for your totem. Now, they are useful, don't get me wrong. The totem of Terra one, for example, you can fear higher level creatures, which is useful. But it is, I mean, if you, if you play Werewolf the way I do and only change to Werewolf every now and again, it probably won't bother you that much because you probably will, you know, still be gaining perks even at the high levels. But I know some people play Werewolf most of the time. Once they've got the Ring of Her Seed, they love to play Werewolf. And I'm afraid you're going to kind of max out this tree relatively quickly and feel, well, like there's no further progression. And that is where mods like Werewolf Perks Expanded come in. Uh, this mod adds some new perks. It enhances the existing ones. So, for example, it adds a new rank to Animal Vigor. So, you can get a, a further boost to your healing rate, which is, of course, nice. Um, it does add some extra perk steps in the existing branches, but I'm going to come back to those in a minute. Um, but it also adds a couple of extra branches. The first one is, for example, Razor Claws which it allows you to ignore armor and two ranks of this give you 50% armor reduction you can ignore 50% of armor which is very nice indeed um, and then of course you've got tough hide as well which again adds damage rating and magic resistance two ranks of that and you will become I mean look at that 50% resistant to magic in werewolf form that is a huge boost now on the other side of this tree you'll find the beast nature perk and this is very interesting because it's a perk that comes with a downside um, on the plus side it means that in human form you get increased running speed stamina rate unarmed damage but you also become weak to silver weapons whilst in human form so a bit of a mixed blessing but you are going to have to take that perk if you want to continue down this tree and it is definitely worth it because with the next perk you get extra health during nighttime and that is also when in human form 75 extra health um, between the hours of 8 p.m. and 4 a.m. that is quite a nice boost even in human form 75 extra health is definitely worth taking and then finally Hercene's Blessing uh, I love this one. This makes predatory beasts um, non-hostile. So you they will just ignore you and not attack you, which is very nice. Um, and also wolves see you as, you know, kin, as it says. Um, this means when in human form, wolves will not attack you either. It always annoyed me that wolves didn't sense the fact that I was a werewolf and leave me alone in human form. But with this perk, they do. Very nice. Now, I mentioned that there were some extra perks on the totem paths, two of them to be precise. And if you go along to the totem of terror and go to the side, you see feral rage. And it adds something he calls a second word. Now, I'm not totally sure that's a very good way of thinking about it, as uh, the, the roars are not really shouts. They don't have words, but it gives you the sort of idea. Um, it means if you hold the key down for your roar, Instead of just tapping it and doing the normal roar, if you hold it down, you will do an extra powerful roar or a roar with a difference. And so, for example, in this case, 
It sends you into a feral state, doubling your strength and resilience, which is rather nice. If you go to the Totem of Predator... Excuse me. Yeah, Totem of Predator. And go to... It's a little hard to get to, actually. This one, Hunter's Instinct. This one adds a second word to the scent of Blood Howl, which slows time around you, which is very interesting. So if I now use the scent of Blood Howl, if I use it normally, as you can see, I can detect life. But if instead of just tapping it, I hold it as if I was trying to do a double word shout. And there I get slow time. Now it only lasts for about 10 or 15 seconds. Um, and as you can see, there is a shout timer, but time is slowed a lot. You could probably kill four to five people before anyone's noticed before it runs out. And as you can see, it's run out now, time is back to normal, but my shout is not ready, my howl is not ready, and I can't even do the normal howl, as you can see. Of course, the same is true for the howl of terror. The normal howl of terror, but if I hold the key, my shout timer is activated and for the duration I will be hitting twice as hard and I will have twice as much resistance, which is very nice. But for that entire period, I cannot howl. So beware, there is a downside to those. So this is a great mod for those who want to really play the werewolf a lot and feel like they're progressing the whole time, um, as well as people who, who want the werewolf to scale a little better. However, it is not the only such mod there is. There is another mod that does something very similar, and that mod is called Blood Moon Rising. And uh, like the previous mod, it does make some fairly major changes to the perk tree. Uh, so for example, on the Bestial Strength perk, you now actually get a sweep attack. That means you will attack all um, things in front of you, all the enemies in front of you in an arc. So if there are three or four enemies stood side by side, one claw can take them all out. Very useful, very powerful. Um, to the left, that is the Fury perk. Now, this gives you extra attack speed. There is the Fury Swipes perk. Now, this actually means you do extra damage when your enemy is an, on low health, which obviously gives you um, a lot more chance to do a killing blow. And beyond Savage Feeding, that branch has now been extended and you get the Feral Endurance, which increases your health and stamina regeneration. Um, obviously, that is very nice. Can never have too much of that. There is Feral Hide. Now, this means you have a, a better armor rating, better damage resistance, but it does increase your weakness to silver. With the second rank, you actually get a 10% chance to slow down time and avoid attacks, which is very nice, but again, notice the weakness to silver has increased even more. This makes you more vulnerable to anything using a silver weapon. And the final perk in that, tr in that branch the Blood Moon Rising perk. Uh, this is rather nice. It gives you a bonus to health, stamina, and movement speed whilst the moon is up. Uh, well, actually, it's any time at night. The perk says it's only in werewolf form. However, it does actually grant you a bonus in human form as well. It's just only half the amount that you get in werewolf form. But it is active when, when as a human as long as it's night. And this mod also seems to add a nice little power when in human form, and that power is Detect Life. Now, on the Blood Moon Rising page, it does state that this mod is not compatible with any other werewolf mods except Tales of Lycanthropy, but I don't think that's correct. Um, I believe what it is incompatible with is any mod that changes the perk tree. I have tested it with quite a lot of other werewolf mods and it seems to work just fine. Um, obviously it does not work with werewolf perk enhanced. Those two do the exact same thing, they overhaul the perk system. 
And of course, that is going to beg the question, which one is best? And the answer is neither. They do the same thing in many ways. They are very, very similar. Um, it's probably a matter of personal taste. I think the Werewolf perk enhanced mod is slightly more powerful. The perks definitely seem to beat Blood Moon Rising if you want a super powerful werewolf. Um, but I couldn't guarantee that. I've not actually played with both of these mods installed to a high level. So that's just going off what, you know, just looking at the perks themselves. So all I can really recommend is that you visit the pages, read up what all the perks do and make your own mind up. They are both great mods, both worth endorsing. Um, it's unfortunate that you can't use them both together. Although that would probably, if you could, if you could take the perks from both trees make your werewolf insanely powerful. And the final mod I'm going to show you in this video is a mod that allows you to customize the werewolf experience to suit your own personal needs. That mod is called Werewolf Mastery. Once you've installed this mod, if you go along to the smithing, to the blacksmith's forge and go along to the jewelry section, you will find a new item the Werewolf Customization Ring. It requires a silver ingot and garnet. Um, it's, it's a little strange that it's a silver ring if you think about it. I, I would imagine werewolves didn't really want to wear silver, but it does seem to be the common thing, doesn't it, in these mods to add silver rings for them to wear. Must be some sort of a masochistic impulse. However, create the item. And once you've created the item, you just equip it. And once you get out of the inventory, a customization menu will be available to you via the power section. Now, in actual fact, by default, the Werewolf customization menu is already selected once you wield the ring. So you don't actually have to come into the powers menu. You can immediately activate the menu. And from here, you get a host of options. If you go along to the Werewolf boosts, for example, you can change the armor. Now, obviously, I haven't changed anything yet, so the vanilla is the currently selected, but I can put it up to plus 150 armor if I wish. I can do the same for the magic resistance. I can add a little magic resistance or make it high and so on. This includes the damage, your health and stamina and so on. So you can really make your werewolf exceptionally strong. This is probably very useful for the, the high level game because once you get to the exceptionally high levels it becomes a lot harder to play werewolves. Uh, but with this mod obviously you can make him a lot tougher. But for me, the more interesting settings are under the beast and human form settings. So for example, if I go to beast form, I can change things like the beast form duration. Um, I can make it longer, I can even make it unlimited. So I never revert back. I don't have to feed. I can stay in werewolf form until I choose otherwise. And I'll show you how you do that in a while. Um, you, can, you can change it so that you can actually loot and even loot and open your inventory. Now I'm going to do that. Um, you can change the transformation settings so that you cause a wave of fear. I'm not going to select this, but you can actually have a wave of fear when you transform. Um, the... Levels available to you depend very much on your own level. So, for example, you can see I don't have the option to scare high-level people because I am not level 45, I think. I think I need to be 45 to get this option available. Um, you can also set it so that you heal whilst transforming. Um, and this one is absolutely brilliant. You can actually make all NPCs non-hostile for yourself in werewolf form. And this means when I change into werewolf form absolutely everyone's fine with it. Which is kind of weird. <laughs> but that's up to you. Maybe you want to play in a, in a land where people just don't mind werewolves. Um, you should notice if you've set the options correctly, you, good thing going here, you can man. even have conversations like this. Don't let it go to waste. You can do your shopping, um, you know, selling things. You can loot yeah, items if you've selected that setting, and so on. Seriously. 
Uh, whilst in werewolf form, if you do your normal shout, obviously it's, a, it's just a shout. If you press the sheath weapons button so that you're no longer in an aggressive pose and press the power button, you get a menu instead, and this allows you to do things like toggle night eye on. Um, you can even change your howl. Change it to scent of blood. Um, and again, I have to once again unsheathe my claws, so to speak. Then I howl. And I'm now howling the uh, scent of blood. There we go. I can see people. I can see people's life forces. Uh, unsheathe the weapons. Go back to the menu. Um, and I can even select revert to human. Especially useful if you are using the unlimited timer. There are other settings in the Beast and Human Form uh, menu under Human Form. This, for example, allows you to change the cooldown. I can actually make it so there's no cooldown. I can have, I can change into Werewolf Form as often as I like. You can change the hostility of wolves when in Human Form to non-hostile. You can even alter the weakness to silver. So if you want to boost your werewolf, make him very tough, but at the same time, make him very vulnerable to silver, you can do it. And you can even change it so that you gain the bonus to experience when sleeping. Completely and utterly up to you. But customization of the werewolf experience is not the only thing this mod adds. You may have actually noticed when I went into the menu whilst a werewolf, there was something called view perk tree. Now this adds an attack branch tree and a defense branch tree that enhance the combat capabilities of your werewolf. You'll notice I have got zero perks. Um, and the way this works is you must finish the tree, the normal werewolf tree completely. You must take every single perk before you can begin to take perks in these. Um, and they are completely separate, so they should stack. However, I have not managed to get my werewolf um, far enough along to be able to test this one out. And it, I found it uh, didn't work when I tried to cheat my way into these perks. So I'm not going to be able to tell you much about how these perks affect the game. However, it seems pretty obvious that this should further enhance your combat abilities as a werewolf and therefore make the end game, the high level game, even more viable in werewolf form. So this mod seems perfect for anyone who wants to change anything about being a werewolf, even if it's something as small as not having to wait to turn back into a human, because um, like normally you have to hit the wait key and wait for an hour or so and then come out, and it always feels a bit annoying. So maybe that's the only thing you want. Or maybe you just want it for the ability to change your howls without using SKSE. Um, there are so many options and how many of them you use is completely up to you. The installation of these mods is pretty much as you would expect. It is fairly easy. The Werewolf Perks Expanded mod. You go along to the file section, download with manager and activate in the Nexus mod manager. Very simple indeed. Now I was not updating from a previous version, but apparently if you are, you need to run the update bat file and that will reset your perks. Read the instructions for that. I've not tried it myself because I didn't try the older version. For Blood Moon Rising, now the file section there has a single file in the main file, so you'll download with manager on that and activate in the Nexus mod manager. But at the time of making this video, there was also an update file. Uh, you will need to download with manager for that as well and activate that after the main file. And when it asks you to overwrite files, click yes to all. And for Werewolf Mastery, go along to the file section. There are two main files, one for Dawn Guard at the bottom here and the top one, which is for people without Dawn Guard. I have Dawn Guard, so I download with manager on that one and activate in Nexus Mod Manager. All very simple. And that is about it for this video. Now, I do appreciate that the last two videos have been very centered around werewolves. And if you are not playing a werewolf character, you may be feeling a little left out about now. 
Now the next video is probably going to involve quite a few werewolf mods as well. I still have a lot left to show, but I promise I will also include some non-werewolf mods as well. I'm going to end this video as always with some screenshots that you guys have made. If you want me to include some of your screenshots in these videos, feel free to post them on my Nexus page. Uh, you are more than welcome. I will try to use as many of them as I can. I look forward to seeing you guys for whichever video you join me on next. And until then, as always, have fun. Quality, 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 quality.